Hello and thank you for watching the first lesson of chapter 10, which is 10.1, IPv6 address representation. IPv4 issues, and we already talked about different IPv4 issues in lesson 8.3, and there was few issues, but one of the main issues was that IPv4 protocol is running out of IP addresses. So for that reason, we have to learn IPv6. Now the depletion of IPv4 address space has been the motivating factor for moving to IPv6. IPv6 is designed to be the successor to IPv4. And I've been saying it for a long time now, for over decades of teaching, I've been saying that we're running out, we're running out of IPv4 addresses and then we have to move to IPv6. The only reason this depletion has slowed down is because we use a private addresses in, together with NAT has slowed down the depletion. So that's why in the year 2020, we still have a IPv4. If we didn't have NAT and the private addresses, we wouldn't have IPv4 in 2000. We would have moved to, to IPv6. So for that reason, we still have IPv4 addresses, but definitely we're going to be moving very soon. <laughs> so if you remember, IPv4 was made out of 32 bits, 32 zeros and ones, and this 32 bits um, just gave us about 4.3 billion addresses. And if you remove the whatever is being reserved, usable addresses will be about 3.7 billion. And that's not enough. That's definitely not enough addresses to assign to all devices connected to the Internet these days. For example, Internet of Things. And so for that reason, we have to move to IPv6. IPv6 is made out of 128 bits. And with 128 bits, we will get about 300, just over 340 undisciplined and possible addresses. That is 340 plus 36 zeros behind it. That is a lot of addresses available with IPv6. Anyway, we've been saying we move into IPv6, we move into IPv6, but if you talk to the internet service providers or top internet service providers like Sky and BT, they are telling you that over 80% of the traffic is over IPv6. So we're definitely going to be moving to IPv6 very soon. But since there is no date, there is no saying, okay, well, on this day, we're going to move to, IP we're going to transition to IPv6. So since there is not that day, we have to move, we have to, IPv4 and IPv6 have to coexist. They have to work together. And we've been ready, we've been preparing. So all of our devices, they do support two stacks. They do support both stacks. They support IPv4 stack and they support IPv6 stack. And if they support both stacks, then they are known as a dual stack devices and um, this is because to get ready so we are using both but one day we really want to switch off IPv4 and just use IPv6 that's that's the goal that's the target but till that day comes we use both we use uh, IPv4 and IPv6 and um, devices manufacturers they've been getting ready for this for a long time for example Microsoft they put this dual stack on their operating systems since Windows XP service back 3 we had dual stack and all the devices these days there will be dual stack another transitioning method is tunneling where we can tunnel IPv6 packet inside IPv4 packet if you imagine in our LAN, maybe here, this is our local area network and our branch. So maybe it's our headquarters and the branch here. And in headquarters and branch, we run in IPv6. But for some reason, our internet service provider is still using IPv4. So, okay, fine. We can have another transition where we can encapsulate our IPv4, IPv6 packet inside the IPv4 packet and then de-encapsulate on the other side. So that's one way, tunneling. Or we can translate, we can do network address translation 64, NAT64, where we can translate IPv6 packet to IPv4, and the other way around, we can translate IPv4 to IPv6. But translation and tunneling really should not be used, it should only be used as a transitioning, but the goal is to just switch off IPv4 altogether and just move straight to IPv6, everything in IPv6. So, as we said, IPv6 is, is made out of 128 bits and is written down in hexadecimal values. Now, these hexadecimal values, you can write them down in lower case or upper case. It doesn't really matter. It's a case sensitive. And, um, and one hexadecimal value, for example, two here, for this represents four bits, four bits. And when we convert this into four, um, and when we convert this to uh, binary, for example, 
we have to think of the position positional values Wait, so if I put a bit here that represents one bit here represents two four and eight so if I convert this to this will become zero zero one zero but if say that I want to convert a a we know that it's 10 so 10 if I'll convert this into binary that will be one zero one zero right just so you remember each value each hexadecimal value is four bits right so for example we have a four hexadecimal values so four times four bits equals 16 bits so four hexadecimal values that will give you 16 bits and that is an unofficial name is known as a hextet so hex tet so one hextet equals 16 bits 16 bits and we do need eight hextet eight hextet to represent an ipv6 so because eight times 16 that will give you 128 128 bits so we need eight eight hextets we just remember that you're going to have eight hextets and um now the people they don't like writing uh, ipv6 and especially because there's so many zeros so many zeros and there's one way we where we can compress this ipv6 um, address by first thing what we can do is uh, to reduce the notation of ipv6 address is to omit zeros in any hex sets so leading zeros we can re remove for example that's a leading zero we can take it off and then we look at here on this fifth hextet there is three leading zeros which we can remove and we have to leave the last zero and then in the sixth hextet we can remove another three leading zeros and then on the seventh hextet we remove three leading zeros eighth hextet we remove the one leading zeros the trailing zeros you can't remove because that will give you a different address so there's no way you can remove the trailing zeros only the leading zeros so then that will give me the address this address if I remove the leading zeros so well, that's gone there that's gone these three are gone here three gone gone and the first one so we can write it this way and there's the one another way we can remove all this all these zeros uh, consecutive zeros as well but that we learn it later in this lesson if I take another example for example if you can stop the video and look at like what zeros are gonna remove but anyway it's very simple leading zeros gone chop chop leading zeros three leading zeros here and three leading zeros here that's it and then the, the um, address will be here the second rule to help reduce the notation of IPv6 address is the double colon can replace any single contiguous string of one or more 16-bit hex that consisting of all zeros so for example if we have a contiguous string of zeros as we can see here we have on the three hex sets we can have contiguous set of zeros and we can replace this with double colon so we can see the hex set five six and seven contiguous zeros we can replace that as well as same time we can remove the leading zeros so we can move we can do the first rule and second rule together right and this will give us another address a bit more simpler writing address not the preferred format preferred format will be when you write all the hexadecimal values but this format this is a compressed format so the leading zero is gone here then the, we have a three contiguous set of zeros on this uh, fifth six and seven hexad which we represent with double colon and then the leading zero is going to be removed from the last hexad as you can see that's easier to write it down I've got another example here for and in this example there is contiguous string of zeros on the third and fourth hexet and then on the sixth and seven hexet right so which one do I take off do I put this one double colon or this one or do I do them both you can't do them both you can't you can't choose either left or right but you can't do them both and uh, recommended is to do the left hexet remove that as a contiguous string of zeros represent that with double colon not this one but either one either way you do it is still correct so I can do it either on the left I remove the contiguous string of zeros and represent it with double colon or I can remove them on the right so I can represent them like that it's either way is right but it's recommended you should do it this way anyway 
now we have uh, for example all zeros because my students sometimes they say oh does it have to be two or can it be more it can be as many as you want contiguous string of zeros it can be one or more 16-bit hexdet so for example here we can see the set there is seven hexdets or contiguous zeros so all of them i can just represent with double corner and then the leading zero can remove from this hexdet and then it will be one so the answer would be just that and that's a loopback address. Anyway, thank you for watching lesson 10.1, IPv6 address representation. This is of chapter 10, IPv6 addressing. Please have a look at my other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And this has been Astrid Krasnichi. Bye-bye.